Hey, how you guys? Yeah, how you guys doing? Yeah, we just having a little bit of a tough time with that program or whatever. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you for coming on. It's uh, it's okay. How you guys doing? How's the kids? Um, I don't know how rambunctious they were, but they don't have to mute the mics. I want them to kind of talk to me. Um, okay. And and be interactive right. a little right. bit. What, what what grade is this? Seven grade. Oh, six, seventh, and eighth grade. So this is middle school. Okay, so which one of y'all got a job? Raise hand. Who got a job? Hannah. I'm waiting. And hold up, somebody work at cookout. It's lunchtime. Do you got something for me? Cause I didn't cut. They wouldn't let me. I was trying to get over there. They, they so they was holding the food out. I work at Gucci. That's not my problem. I work at Gucci. She said she worked at Gucci. You work at Gucci, Hannah? Yeah, I work at Gucci. I make that money. I wait. I make that money. Hey, listen. Okay, so listen up, right? How you know you guys are go had to go back to um virtual school? How do you feel about that? I mean, I got used to it. Yeah. I like it. Y'all don't talk at one time. Now, excuse me. Y'all got to raise your hand and don't. I, I see. I, 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 yeah, and I see somebody got in the chat. I'm going to tell you who I am in a minute. I'm getting to know you guys first because I'm coming into your house. So I'm getting to know you guys a little bit. So how do you guys feel about, you know, the virtual learning piece? I hate it. Who, who said they hate it? It makes you want to scream. It makes you want to scream? Raise your hand. Two more people, Mark. Hannah. Let's go. You got your hand up, Hannah. Tell me Man. how you feel about virtual school. It makes me want to scream into a pillow and then tear the pillow up. Oh wow! Just, wow. Why is the slowest laptop ever in existence? It like took a whole workout to get just in this meeting. Okay. So I need to, like get in like five minutes before just to have time to be able to get in semi on time. Oh, but well, keep that in mind. I'm gonna come back to you on that one, India. Well, thank you guys for indulging me with that. Um, I just wanted to kind of get a feel of, you know, your, your energy on here. So I don't know how much they told you about me, but my name is Jay Haleen Washington. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm right up the street from you guys. I have a big studio right off of St. Andrews Road. Um, you know, we do, you see my company in the back, Jay Haleen Media. We do commercials, television, photos, everything like that. And I have a few different companies. Another company, I Won't Starve, that's the name of my book. But we also um, do a whole, we teach people how to be entrepreneurs. We have a whole school ourselves. We train business um, entrepreneur people, um, make people entrepreneurs as well as we help kids as well. We actually have a virtual learning pod going on right now where we have some students up front. <laughs> 
um, as we speak. So we've been doing that since school started to help out the area to make sure that, you know, because we have a whole lot of space. So I wanted to talk to you guys today about opportunities. And you know, that's really one of the reasons why I asked you guys about virtual learning. I want to get a chance to figure out what you thought about it. But I want to give you a different thought process about opportunities. Now, I just noticed that um, Hannah, you know, was just talking to, I believe that was her dad. And so how many of you guys know that you have an opportunity to spend more time with your family right now? How many of you guys, someone just said that, uh, Marcus said that he was able to get some more work done after after hours. You know how much pressure that is trying to, hey, dad, you know how much pressure that is, you know, trying to do some work in between the hours that you have allotted for between classes and you had to get it done, you had to go to the next class, you had to get it done, you had to go to the next class. But you can actually wait a little longer, get some work done. What about the opportunity to eat better food? I know you guys have, are at home and your parents are like giving you a whole lot. Y'all, y'all lunch is like off the hook now, right? Y'all, y'all eating, y'all not eating at school lunch. Y'all eating at lunch at home. I know my kids, I have a middle schooler and my, my middle schooler is going crazy with my refrigerator right now. <laughs> Even at our office, she said she's here with the other students, but they're like eating noodles when they want to or eating good turkey sandwiches or leftover food from home or Sometimes we actually go get pizza and things of that nature. So, and we're getting like Marco's pizza, not just the <laughs> the other kind of pizza. So they're like having a good time. But this is the biggest opportunity you guys have because I heard some. I heard Hannah say that she has to get on five minutes before. You guys have an opportunity to see what real life looks like. You guys are only in school for thirteen years of your life that you have to be. If you live to be a hundred. That's 87 more years that you have to go of seeing what this actually really looks like. You're going to have to get to work five minutes, 15 minutes earlier so you can get prepared, get your mind right to go ahead and put in a great day. You're going to have to actually um, manage yourself. Nobody's going to go and get you out of bed to make sure you go to work. You're going to have to get yourself out of bed. You're going to have to be responsible enough to do the things you have to do. Otherwise, you won't get a paycheck. Otherwise, you won't be able to take care of yourself. And you're going to have children and those things. So it's teaching you responsibility. I know it's inconvenient. But responsibility sometimes is inconvenient, but it's very, very rewarding at the end of the day. So when you have a parent that goes to work every day, yes, it's stressful. And they have to figure out how to feed you guys and take care of you. But what happens when they sit back and they can just see all the things, the fruits of their labor, everything that they did, all of the house that they was able to provide for you. A lot of you guys live in better houses than they than they did when they were growing up. A lot of you, you guys have a lot of opportunities that their parents that they didn't have. Their parents wasn't able to give them, and that's because they took on the responsibility. So this is the opportunity for you to take on the responsibility. No one's singling you out. Everybody has to go through virtual school the same way you're going right now. Everybody has to go through the pandemic. Everybody's having some type of issue. Some are worse than others, but it is an issue. And you have to understand that this happens in life. This is this. All you guys are getting a glimpse of real life. I remember being in college and I had a friend who cried when we were graduating. Not because he was graduating. He cried because he didn't know what he was going to do afterwards. And the reason why, because he wasn't prepared for real life after school. And so this is what's happening. I know you didn't ask for it. Trust me, your parents didn't ask for it. A lot of people didn't ask for it. But we have to make the best out of bad situations. You know, I have this hat on. I won't starve. I created this company because at your time, uh, you know, I had a horrible, you know, middle school existence, I would say. You know, my mom left me at that time when I was in sixth grade. And my grandmother was taking care of me. She raised eight children of her own. Now she's starting on her kids, and I'm the oldest grandchild. Um, and she had to take care of me. She didn't have no money. We lived in a horrible neighborhood in Newark, New Jersey. And I had to figure it out. I was upset. I would act out. I would do a whole bunch of things. My grandmother sat me down in eighth grade and told me something that I always remember. She said, you always got a place to stay here. She said, I don't have any money to buy you clothes and things like that, so you're going to have to become a man early. She said, but as long as you do what you're supposed to do, I'll do my part. And through high school, I worked 
like a madman. As soon as the summertime came, I got a job at a car wash and I never stopped working until, I mean, I still work now, <laughs> but I never stopped working since that time. And I'm able to give my kids way better life than I had. But I, t I was able to make an agreement with my grandmother and I, and I was responsible enough to be a man at 13 going on 14 years old to say, you know what, grandma, if you say you're going to do this part, I'm going to do my part. She never had to buy me any clothes, any shoes anymore, but she always let me so I had a roof over my head and I had food to eat. And that was a partnership. And this is what you have to do with your parents and with your school. They have to be able to trust you and say, you know what, we're going to let you come on this computer and we're going to do your work from home. Your parents say, hey, we're going to leave you in the room by yourself. We're going to trust that you're going to do the things that you're supposed to do because it's not just hard on you. As I told you, my grandmother didn't have a job. She had hurt herself a couple years prior, so she couldn't work anymore. And she's never been able to work since. But she she counted on me to do my part because could you imagine she had to keep coming up to the school every day for me? And have to try to figure out something for me. That would have been tough. But I had to do my part. So do your part. Make it a little bit easier on yourself. Make it at first. And then make it so much easier on your parents. And more importantly, the, the teachers. Because they, you got to think about it. They're coming to a job where they have to take care of you. They have children too. And so all the things that's going on. Their kids might be in another school. That they're going to have to check their homework. Check your homework. Make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to do. Everybody's going through this crazy time together. That's the great part about it. It's not like you're going through a crazy time, somebody else going through a crazy time, and everybody else in the world is living it up. We're all going through a crazy time together, but that's the best thing. We'll grow together, we'll learn together, and we'll be better together when this is all over. So for me, and what I want you guys to think about, think about my mantra, I won't starve. You can use it. In different what you can use it in different ways. It means I won't fail. You can put a fail right there. You know, I won't lose. I I won't let my family down. But for me, this was about business. This was something I, I believe for myself because I'm an entrepreneur. But for you, you it can be I won't disappoint my mom or dad. You know, I won't get a low grade. Whichever one you want to put there, I want you to have that declaration for yourself. Because only you have control. At the end of the day, even your parents don't have control. They're going to do the best they can to give you the best opportunity. But it's your life. They've been through middle school. They can't get a grade for you. They can't get graded because they act. They know how to act when they listen in class. It's all the grades is on you. You're going to make them look good. And don't you want your mom and dad to look good? That's the secret to life. The more people you make look good, the better you look See, people always think about themselves, but trust me, the more people you make look good, the better you look. So when your teacher look good, she's going to parade you around everybody. And she's going to say, Lucas made me look real good. And Marcus, he acts very, very well every time. So the more people you make look good and make their job easier, the more they're going to sing your praises. So I, you know, I thank you guys for giving me an opportunity to talk to you. Um, you guys are in a special, special grade right now. I, you know, again, I, my daughter's in seventh grade. Things are changing in your life right now, not just in your, in, you know, in school, but your body. You're, you're getting, you know, uh, a lot more responsibilities at home, especially right now. You know, you're, you should clean up your room in the morning. I have to worry about it, but you're there all day now. <laughs> so it's hard to do all of that stuff. You got to think about work. I know, and trust me, your parents know, your teachers know. So, we know that if you doing, if you're coming and doing good work now, that you really got your head on straight because if things aren't as easy as it was before. So let me thank you in advance for getting through this portion of school. You're halfway through this crazy school year, so there's no need to turn back now. If you did great now, don't go back to doing something crazy after you come back from the break. Come back in and 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 do even better. If it's, if it's better to do, do better and knock it out the park. I promise you, it's going to help you. It's going to help your school. And it's going to you know help everybody know that COVID-19 couldn't break you. It couldn't break your, your family. It couldn't break your classmates. And definitely it couldn't break your school. So thank you guys so much. I want you guys to ask me all the questions you want to ask me and tell me about your nice jobs and 
lunch because I'm hungry. <laughs> and if that mom and dad made you some good food and things like that, and I'm going to give you guys some time to talk to me, but I'm here for you guys to talk. Thank you, though. Thank you, sir. No Anyone problem. have any questions? I see hands. Um, I can't tell. Your hands were still up from the last time. Um, Anna, I, know, I know Kai's hand um, went up. That was a really recent one in India. Okay. Kaya? Ma'am? Yeah. You have a question, baby? I don't know, ma'am. I had my hand up the last time. More? Okay, okay thank you. Morgan, ma'am, you have a question, sweetie? No, ma'am. Okay. Anyone have a question? Do you want to know anything about his business? No one. Is this Marcus? Kylie. Yes. Oh, and then Marcus next. Go ahead, Kylie. I have a question. Just wanted to say thank. That was. It's a beautiful speech. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Aww. I appreciate <laughs> Thank you. Marcus? Yes, ma'am. You have a question, sweetheart? Mm-hmm. Go ahead. The um the only the only thing my my job is um at the Anglican school, my job my only job is to to play video games and play my phone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Listen, you know they have they actually have real jobs like that now. You can actually be what they call a gamer. And you can test out the games and, and make sure that they're working working properly and they pay a lot of money for that. So um get prepared, get real good at that game and make sure that you're doing your work first because they do want you to have certain grades before they let you come and do that type of thing. So um that's that's a good job. But what I want you to do is help out your parents, too. So do you take out the trash? Do you do the dishes? Do you clean your room? Those are jobs right now. I do the dishes for my mom. Yeah, that's that, that's a job. That's a job. Do the dishes, clean your room, you know, because your mom and dad don't sleep in your room, so they shouldn't have to clean up after you. So you help them out. You'll learn that the more things that you do, the less they have to do, the better. That's a that's a big big help. I I noticed you you t you said you guys do photography and and commercials. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Okay. Um. Well, I am a commercial photographer. I've worked with companies like Nike. I've worked with um, Save the Children Foundation, um, the National Guard, Amtrak, a whole bunch of law firms, things of that nature. So. Um, then we went on to doing films. So a lot of, a lot of law firms who, um, wanted commercials and promotion for their companies. We've done those. Um, again, we work with, um, Asia Wilson. I don't know if you guys know her from here. She's, um, WNBA MVP this year. Yeah. Um, so we did her Nike campaign, a lot of her photos, um, and things like that we done with her. I've been working with her since she got out of high school. So, um, so yeah, that's some of the things we've done. And, um, yeah, so we've worked with a, a bunch of companies, City of Columbia, uh, Richland County, MUSC, USC, some of everybody. Oh, great, great. Got can I ask any questions? Okay, Morgan has a question. Can you hear me? Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So my question was, um, through all the stuff that you have done, was there ever it's like one of the hardest times where you just stop to think to yourself, I can't do it anymore, or I need to take a break, or I, I feel like quitting, yep. or something like that? Yes, definitely. Great question. So that's where I Won't Starve came from, because when I came back to South Carolina, I came down here. I'm from New Jersey. I came down here to go to college. When I graduated, I moved with my wife to D.C., um, and we went through what, we, what the adults know as the Great Recession about 12 years ago. <clears throat> and um, my wife lost her job. She's working on Capitol Hill. She lost her job out of nowhere. I had to sell my business to make sure that we were okay. And we came back south because it's a little bit cheaper. But it was hard to find jobs. Very, very hard, you know, for us to find jobs. And so I had to take a real, real bad job. I mean, it's not a bad job, but something that I was very, very way more qualified for to the point I was making like $8 an hour, and I was frustrated with that, you know, um, 
we we had a hard time. I was just having my son. Uh, we lost a car. All type of stuff happened. And um, I just didn't, I questioned myself. I knew I had skills. I knew I've done so much at that time. I questioned myself. I even sold my camera. <laughs> you know, I didn't want to do that anymore. Um, but my pastor actually gave my camera back to me and told me that I needed to do my work. And um, I went out and, and, and just did my thing. So the next year I left that job and I've never been back to the job since. And I wrote a book about it. You know, it was called I Won't Starve because um, it was at that point where I did feel like quitting. But when I left my job, I, I vowed to myself that I wouldn't starve and my family wouldn't starve. I believed that I created enough of a platform for myself that I can go out here and we'll be okay. And we are, we're doing very, very well. Okay, Hannah has a question. Unmute yourself, Hannah. Look, like she's frozen. Yeah, it looks like she's frozen a little bit. Yeah, she froze up. That's still. Mm -hmm. I think she's gonna. She's gone. Yeah, she's Deshonda, do you have a question? No. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Well, um, uh oh. That was Can Mark. Again? Sure. All right. So, thank you so much for coming on. Yes, we sir. really appreciate you. I think the kids enjoyed you also. Everyone, yeah, just too. thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. I appreciate you having me. I look forward to seeing you guys when they let us when they let us come back around. I would love to come back and see you guys. I was there a couple years ago, um, 2018, speaking to the um, parents in the evening. Um, I think December 2018. I did, they had something going on with the parents, and I came in to speak okay. then. So I would love to come back. I'm glad you guys are still doing great work. And we're here we're right up the street from you guys. So we're here to support however we can. All right, sir. Thank you very much. No problem. You guys have a blessed day. Kids, do well. All right. Have a good one. All right. Bye. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Right. <laughs> Thank you.